My name is Simisha and I'm an application engineer in Typhoon Hill. Uh, today I'm going to present you uh, one of our component in microgrid library. That component is battery inverter. Uh, also today we, uh, we're going to present you our example. Uh, here by my side I have a Hill 604. So let's jump on schematic editor. Okay. Here on our left side we can see our libraries, so uh, uh, let's find our battery inverter. That component is in microgrid library, energy storage and we can see three types of battery inverters. We will, today we are going to present you the switching model. By easy drag and drop we can find uh, our component in our schematic. Uh, here, let's see what, what is the properties of this component. Uh, here we can find some uh, general settings, filter settings and some advanced settings for this component. Uh, in general settings we can find some nominal power, nominal voltage, nominal DC liquid voltage, nominal frequency, switching frequency and execution rate. Uh, for more about these parameters, we can find in our help. Okay, here we can find uh, the structure of the of this component, as well as some inputs and outputs uh, in our component. As uh, inputs, we use vectors. So, to see which element in vector represents what, we can find uh, that here in battery inverter inputs and battery inverter outputs. There is also uh, explanation of every of these steps and what each parameter is for. Let's see what we have inside this component. To see what is inside, we can easily use uh, mask and look under the mask. The shortcut for this uh, is control enter. Here on our left side we can see uh, DC link, three phase inverter, LC filter, converter measurements, grid measurements and some contactor. This is our electrical part. For our signal processing part we have here these blue lines and blue blocks. Let's see what we have uh, inside our controller. But before that, let me show you how this inverter is controlled. So here we have internal modulator, which is switching frequency uh, same as uh, we defined in our mask. So the switching frequency is 2500. So let's see what we have here also. There is also possibility to control this inverter uh, dig with digital inputs. In this case, there is a digital input per switch and digital in input per lag. Uh, to see more information about this component, you can use our help. Here we can see our topology. There is also possibility to use losses and so on. Okay. Let's see what we have uh, inside the control part. Okay, here we can see uh, some PLLs as well as V mode control, I mode control, and sync. There is also some uh, power uh, measurements uh, as well as component for duty cycle and so on. Okay. Let's find our example. To find our example, let's uh, go to File, Open Example Model, Microgrid, Energy Storage, Battery Inverter Switching, and Battery Inverter. This is our example. Uh, we can see here on our left side there is a battery. There is also battery inverter. There is also some simple load. We can see here. There is also some contactor and grid. There is also three phase uh, water source. 
here we can find also some battery inputs and battery outputs okay let's see what we have here in our battery inputs we can see that we use here six uh, SCADA inputs and one bus join this will be uh, our vector for our inputs there is also uh, battery outputs here we can see that this is only represented with one output okay here we have one additional element this element is core coupling uh, this element will divide our uh, model in two parts so that one part uh, will execute in uh, one signal processing core and the other one will work on another signal processing core on FPGA chip. The main reason why we need the core coupling is that this model uh, cannot work in only one uh, core. The problem is memory matrix utilization that is more than 100%. So when this happens we need to use our core coupling to, to divide our model in two separate parts. By clicking on Compile and Open Model in Hill SCADA, we will automatically open our Hill SCADA after compilation is finished. Okay. Okay, this is Hill SCADA. Here on our lab side, we can find very interesting uh, widgets. Here we can find some action widgets, monitoring, data logging, analysis, connection, and visual. By uh, easy drag and drop, we can include our one of widgets in our uh, panel. Here we can find also uh, our analog signal where we which we want to follow. Okay. On our right side, we can find model settings. Here we can change uh, some variables in our model such as sources, contactors, switching blocks, batteries, and SCADA inputs. Okay, let's change some in, uh, initial uh, state of charge in our battery. Let's set it on 40%. In our SCADA panel, we can find battery inverter panel, caption and scope, and one button for setting the grid. Let's see what we have in our battery inverter panel. Okay, uh, to, be, uh, to have better view, we can use uh, full screen mode. Also, we can uh, use best fit zoom to have better visual uh, for this uh, battery inverter panel. Okay, here we have some uh, widgets, we have some uh, terminal voltage trace graphs and there is also some combo boxes for uh, setting the inverter on or off and for inverter mode. There is also four sliders for voltage, frequency, active and reactive power. There is also some uh, LED indicators. Let's now run this model. To run this simulation you don't have to go out of full screen mode. You can usually use this button for start the simulation. So let's start this simulation. Okay, let's see first our grid forming mode. Let's turn on the inverter. Okay, in this mode we can change uh, voltage reference as well as frequency reference. Okay, let's increase some referent voltage for let's say 10 volts. We can see that our inverter follows that reference. There is also some data in our terminal voltage. Okay, let's increase now for 20 volts. We can see also small changes in terminal voltage as well as in active power. So Let's put on the back on nominal voltage. Now we can change also some uh, frequency. Let's increase for a little bit. 
we can see that our inverter follows that reference. Let's decrease for a little bit. And let's set on the nominal frequency. There is also possibility to see instantaneous values for, let's say, for voltage and currents. Here we can find more about that. There is also two modes, scope and capture. Let's capture for 0.5 seconds all these signals. I clicked on force trigger. Uh, using this force trigger we can just force uh, our capture. Let's zoom for a little bit. We can see some switching ripples in our current as well as voltage uh, from outside of inverter. Okay, let's go back. Okay, the good thing about this uh, panel inverter is that we can use more than once. So let me show you how we can do that. So now I'm going to put another one uh, battery inverter, same as this one is in our system. Okay, to do that, the best way is to copy and paste this block. Here is the one most important thing. Also, we have to put this battery inverter in separate core. So let's do that. So by copy and paste this core coupling, we can manage that. Let's move a little bit. Okay, so now we have two battery inverters. Let's compile this model. Okay, now model is compiled. So let me show you how you can use the same panel for the second inverter. We just need to copy and paste this one. For, on the right click we can go copy widget and then just paste widget. So we have now two same battery inverter panels. Let's change uh, the second one so we have uh, parameters and variables for the second inverter. So to, to do that we just need to go to properties, local namespace and then just uh, change the name for path to component, path to input, path to output, and path to battery. Okay, here we can see the name for battery in inverter, for battery inputs and battery outputs. So let me just change the name here. Okay. So let's start the simulation. Okay, now we can see the second one inverter has almost the same parameters as the first one. So let's run the second inverter. So now we run the second inverter. And let's run the first one. So in this way we can easily use battery inverter panel for more than one battery inverter. So today we saw how we can use our battery inverter, how to change parameters, where to find example models and how to use our battery inverter panel and capture and scope also. Thank you for watching.